Good evening, everyone. I'm Megan Kelly, and I'm back. Tonight, talk of hostage takers and political terrorists in the blame game over the government shutdown with no end in sight. Earlier today, President Obama insisted there is not a single subject that he's unwilling to work on, but he won't do it under threat, he says. Speaker of the House John Boehner claims a White House official says President Obama would rather default than negotiate. And at the white-hot center of this story is a senator who only took office this year who Democrats say is pulling all the strings. Watch. To fund these piecemeal bills would give Ted Cruz a veto power. Ted Cruz is not the entire U.S. government. Senator Cruz spent the summer traveling around the country promising the Tea Party the sun, the moon, and the end of Obamacare. Shutting down the government, pretty radical. But we are really dealing here with, for short, Cruzites. They're sort of anarchist, radical libertarians uh, who don't believe in government. They don't believe in evolution. They believe in devolution. Wow. Texas Senator Ted Cruz is a Republican <laughs> and our guest tonight. Senator, good to see you. What's it like to be the most hated man in America? Well, Megan, it's great to be with you. And let me start by just saying congratulations on your, on your new show. Fox News is lucky to have you, and I am honored to have the chance to join you on your very first show. Thank you very much, sir. All right, so what? Now answer the question. Uh, look, I, I think there have been more than a few Democrats who are throwing rocks my direction. And, and, and to, to, to quote the Bard, methinks she doth protest too much. Uh, they are throwing every insult they can. But, but the reality is most Americans don't care about politicians bickering. They're looking for people to solve the problems. What we need to do right now is what the House of Representatives are doing. The House of Representatives is passing bills to fund vital priorities of government. And unfortunately, President Obama and the Senate Democrats are refusing to negotiate. They're refusing to pass bills. Today, President Obama went to visit FEMA. He gave a speech about how important FEMA is. On Friday, the House passed a bill to fund FEMA, and yet the President is threatening to veto the bill that would fund uh, the, the very organization he's saying is critical to this country. He wants to fund these things, and they want to fund these things. They just don't want to do it piecemeal. They are being stopped from doing it in full, whole fashion by the House Republicans right now, and others say you are pulling those strings. The, the numbers so far, there's a poll that's just out tonight uh, from Politico, Senator, show that your, your numbers with the American people are not that great. Uh, I'll show it to you. This has just been released at 9 p.m. Eastern. Favorability uh, rating 26%. 45% have an unfavorable opinion of you. 29% say they're not sure. Uh, so the question is whether you are costing yourself and the GOP. Well, I, I haven't seen the particular poll you're referencing, but I can tell you at the end of the day, it, it doesn't matter. Look, what, what, what the Democrats are trying to do is make this a battle of personalities. They have engaged in relentless, nasty, personal attacks. You just played several of them. I don't intend to defend myself, I don't intend to reciprocate. Why? Because what matters is responding to the American people. Millions of Americans are losing their jobs, are being forced into part-time work, are seeing skyrocketing health insurance premiums, and are losing their health insurance. And the Democrats, their answer is they will not talk, they will not negotiate. The House of Representatives, Megan, has passed eight bills to fund vital priorities of the government. For example, the House has passed a bill to fund the Department of Veterans Affairs. And what is happening, President Obama and the Senate Democrats are blocking it. The reason the VA is largely shut down today is because Senate Democrats will not allow Congress to fund it. I think that's irresponsible, I think it's partisan, and, and it doesn't make sense. As you know, President Obama believes that this is on you, uh, not on the Democrats. And he actually came out in an interview on Friday and had a little advice for you, Senator. I want to play for you. If you recall, when I came to the Senate, uh, my attitude was uh, I should just keep a pretty low profile in the Senate and just do the work. The media uh, certainly didn't the, let you the, the, do the, that. The, the, the media may not have, but I didn't go around courting the media. And I certain didn't, certainly didn't go around uh, trying to shut down the government. Your response? Well, you know, I think it's pretty remarkable that the president feels the need to, to run out of his way to, to attack senators and the other party. 
And, and, and let me say, you know, I wish he hadn't been following his own advice in the last month. I mean, the president has kept such a low profile. He, he has been AWOL. He has not been part of the negotiations. He's been refusing even to talk to Congress. He finally invited congressional leaders to the White House, and he sat down with them and said, you're here because I want to tell you I'm not going to negotiate. I mean, that, that's not reasonable. You, you know, it's, it's important to stress, Megan, there are eight bills the House has passed that are sitting on Harry Reid's desk in the that. Senate. You mentioned that. And Harry Reid will not let a vote happen on those. But, and and but by what, the way... what we have here is, is the Republicans trying to blame the Democrats and the Democrats trying to blame the Republicans. And I think the Republicans watching this debate worry to some extent. There are some who think you're standing on principle and they love it. And there are others who worry that you might be costing the Republicans the one body that they now control. There was a PPP poll, Democratic-leaning organization, that does polling that came out suggesting that now we've got uh, 24 House Republican seats that are vulnerable. The Democrats only need 17 to take control of the House, and they so they you know they don't want to win the battle and lose the war. Is that what's happening here? Well, let me say two things on that. Number one, I think the fight we're engaged in right now is the most important fight for Republicans to win politically in 2014. If you look at the past four elections, 2006, 2008, 2010, 2012. Three of the last four, 06, 08, and 12, were disasters for Republicans. And they were years in which we just, we stayed quiet, we went along to get along, we didn't stand on principle. The only year that was a good year for Republicans was 2010, when we painted in bold colors, not in pale pastels, we stood for principle. I think winning this fight right now is the most important thing we can do to see significant victories in 2014. But, but secondly, let me make clear, look, there's a very natural instinct for someone watching an impasse to say, well, both parties are at fault. The problem is, in this instance, you've got the House of Representatives that is repeatedly compromising. It is compromised on Obamacare, starting from wanting to repeal it, to going to defunding it, to going to delaying it, to going to just delaying the individual mandate and, and the congressional exemption. Throughout it all, President Obama and the Democrats have said they won't negotiate, they will not compromise, they want 100% of everything. When you've got one party refusing even to talk and the other party trying to compromise, that's what leads to the problem. Likewise. Yeah, and I've, uh, look, I got, I've got to wrap yeah. it up because we're, we're short on time, but I want to ask before I let you go, I need a quick answer. At this point in the game, with the government shut down and now another fight looming over whether we're going to raise mm -hmm. the nation's credit card limit, what do you consider a victory? I think a victory is if we prevent some of the enormous harms Obamacare is inflicting on millions of Americans. I think what we need to do this week is fund government's vital priorities. For example, the VA. We've launched a national website, fundourvets.com, that says, listen, regardless of what you think about the shutdown, veterans should be a bipartisan priority. We ought to fund our vets and honor our commitments. If we take care of vital government priorities this week, and then going forward, we negotiate a compromise that mitigates, that prevents the harms Obamacare is causing to millions of Americans. That will be a real victory for the American people. Senator Ted Cruz, we're honored to have you as the very first guest on our inaugural broadcast. We're grateful to you. Thank you so much, sir. It's great to be with you. Thank you, Megan. All the best to you.